Hello, 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 Spy Kit in here with another eye-opening expose. In today's video, I have some surprising information that I'd like to share with you all regarding the Christian Orthodox and the Catholic Churches, and also the reason as to why I am no longer a part of the Orthodox community. But before we could truly dive into this topic, we must understand the history of these two highly sought after denominations that were once combined. Now, the first Christian church, or the Orthodox Church, was founded on the day of the Holy Pentecost in Jerusalem in 33 AD, exactly 50 days after the Holy Resurrection of Jesus Christ. The first major bishops of the church, who are also known as patriarchs, began spreading their doctrines, ideals, and practices all over the ancient world. From Jerusalem, Alexandria, and Constantinople, the church later spread to Russia, Romania, and other Slavic countries with a patriarch overseeing each major city. However, about a thousand years later, in 1054 to be exact, the Patriarch of Rome broke away from the original church by making unacceptable claims of authority over the entire Christian church. This division is now referred to as the Great Schism. As of now, you might be thinking, I don't see anything wrong with the Orthodox Church. After all, it's the first one. Well, we must look inside to see how men have completely corrupted and changed the original design of the very first and true Christian church with time. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Every man hath praise of God, and these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Chapter 1. The Buddhist Orthodox Connection Buddhism originated in eastern India and Asia during the 6th century BC. Founder Gautama Buddha Throughout the thousands of years of devotion, there have been many prominent customs in Eastern religions. But the Buddhist and the Hindu practice of the use of mudras has been one of the most widely used, yet rarely recognized traditions. It is an ancient occult exercise that leads to a false sense of enlightenment. Mudra, a gesture or position, usually of the hands, that controls and guides energy flow to the body and the brain. By curling, crossing, stretching and touching the fingers and hands, we can talk to the body and mind as each area of the hand responds to a certain part of the brain.
Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. But not only are they taking traditions from the East, but also from the occult. The Roman Catholics use the ancient Anjali Mudra during prayer without any knowledge of its occult origins. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. The Orthodox community uses the mandatory ancient Kubera Mudra to cross themselves at the end of each and every prayer, a necessary attribute when in front of icons. Ye worship ye know not what. As you could see here, they make a pentagram unknowingly. The first use of pentagrams dates back as far as 3500 BC. Egyptians called the pentagram the Star of Anubis, who is the dog-headed god of the dead and the underworld. The Star of Anubis is now more commonly referred to as the Star of Sirius, the Dog Star. What you are seeing here is not Anubis. This is Saint Christopher, the dog-headed saint. Chapter 2, The Church and the Worship of Death Disclaimer, the following chapter will depict graphic imagery of the afterlife. In most religions, there's a strong occult worship of the dead. Exhumation, to dig up something buried, especially a dead body, out of the earth after a period of neglect. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? Both churches practice exhumation of random graves and claim them as holy figures. The priests identify a true saint by the decomposition state of the body after death and are crowned holy people of God if and only if they are in near perfect condition. Some churches will go as far as placing fake masks on the saints' faces to fool the followers of the church into worshipping the dead. But look at the hands. These cadavers and corpses 
are known as incorruptible relics. Once again, we have another Eastern connection. But let's see what the Bible says. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Countless Orthodox and Catholic churches have catacombs, crypts, and graves built in beneath them. Various churches are embellished with skeletal remains and even fully ornamented with skulls and bones. The luxurious chest you're looking at is known as a relic box. As a rule, they contain the severed bones and body parts of saints. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. A multitude of churches around the globe claim to possess the body parts of saints and other religious and holy figures. But the amount of body fragments they claim to have just does not add up. When added up, Saint Andrew has a total of six heads, five bodies, and 17 hands. Saint Juliana has a total of 26 heads and 20 bodies on display around the world. John the Baptist has seven heads and 10 bodies. Jeremiah has four heads, two bodies, and 63 fingers. Peter has a total of 16 bodies on exhibition. But that is not all. The church's lucrative relics business does not leave anyone out. Mary Magdalene is said to be cut up into dozens of different pieces and kept on display around the world. It is said that her wrist is kept at the Orthodox Monastery of Simon Peter in Athos, Greece. While millions flock to St. Maximin Basilica of France to have a glimpse of her supposed skull. These wicked businessmen have been deceiving the masses since the Middle Ages. These so-called houses of worship have extraordinary claims and tall tales. The Orthodox and Catholic churches even declare to have the original chunks of wood from the cross Jesus was hung on. But if we were to total it all up, we would have enough lumber to build multiple mansions. They have over 1,235 nails that were used during Jesus' crucifixion. All are alleged to be original. They supposedly saved the hair of baby Jesus. The tail of the donkey Jesus Christ rode on. A pair of sandals Jesus wore remnants of the apostles' clothing, and even the bones of the rooster that crowed three times during Peter's denial. Just when you think this couldn't get any more outrageous, they claim to have the last breath of Jesus kept in a box, the foreskin from the circumcision of Jesus, also known as the Holy Preface. So much of Mary's breast milk that it would take 20 cows a lifetime to produce that much milk and the blasphemous list goes on and on. But he that sinneth against me 
wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. The Orthodox and Catholic churches have so far proven themselves to be caught up in the traditions of man that they even began to adore random objects, death, and men more than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. And he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing, and love salutations in the marketplaces, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the uppermost rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. Chapter 3 The Idolatry of the Queen of Heaven As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals and were well, and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour our drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. Catholic Church prays to a multitude of saints, most notably to the mother of Jesus known as Mary. One of the most popular prayers to her goes as follows, and I quote, Queen of Heaven, rejoice! The Son whom you merited to bear has arisen as he said. Pray for us to God. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, for the Lord has truly risen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, gave rejoicing to the world, we pray that through his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Unquote. This practice has no biblical basis whatsoever. In fact, it is blasphemous to pray to anyone other than God. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. And they forsook the Lord, and served Baal and Ashtoreth. Ashtaroth is a false goddess who is also known to many as the heavenly mother that gives life. She is also considered a companion or even the wife of Baal who is known as the sun god. Now Ashtaroth takes on three main roles. She's known as the Queen of Heaven, she's a virgin, but yet she's a mother. Long ago, the Queen of Heaven was worshipped by many nations. The Phoenicians, among many others, always associated the Queen of Heaven with the moon. And hath gone and served other gods, and worshipped them, either the sun or moon, or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded.
The Queen of Heaven is always in one way or another portrayed alongside the Moon Crescent and can also be referred to as the Moon Goddess. In different traditions, the Queen of Heaven, or aka the Moon Goddess, can be illustrated standing on a Moon Crescent while crying or holding a cruciform rod. Additionally, the Queen of Heaven can occasionally be adorned with horns upon her head, which also denote the lunar bow. This same goddess is called by different names by contrasting nations. The Phoenicians call her Ashtaroth or Astarte. In the Assyrian culture, she is known as Ishtar. The Romans called her Diana. The Sumerians knew her as Inanna, while the Greeks dubbed her as Artemida and Selena. So knowing that, I must pose an important question. In our modern day, how can we recognize the worship of the Queen of Heaven? So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshippeth. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. The Crescent Moon is the most important attribute of the Queen of Heaven. And saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry, And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! But they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ preached against the cult of the Queen of Heaven from the very beginning. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Neither is there salvation in any other, 
for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In Orthodoxy and Catholicism, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is falsely known as an eternal virgin. This is a very blasphemous doctrine that evolved out of Gnosticism. Now the word Gnosticism is derived from the Greek root gnosis, meaning to know or to have special knowledge. However, Gnosticism was one of the first false doctrines that the early church battled against. Among a multitude of other heresies, the Gnostics promoted docetism, which is the belief that Jesus Christ was only a spirit and came to earth in a phantom body. In essence, the Gnostics believe that Jesus only appeared to be human to his followers. This is a great error. Let's see how the apostles of Jesus Christ confuted and rebuked this Gnostic fallacy. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. This is very important to take into consideration, because the idolatrous teachings of Gnostics state that Christ only appeared human but was in fact spirit thus keeping Mary a virgin and blaspheming the fleshly birth of Jesus Christ by believing in Mary being an eternal virgin the Catholic and Orthodox Church is therefore under the spirit of Antichrist while keeping the Gnostic doctrines alive and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. The occult deception of God being a woman is a blasphemous lie. Biblically, we are told to pray to God and to God only in the name of Jesus, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. But sadly, in the Catholic and Orthodox world, many are taught to pray to anyone other but God. Let's take a look at the differences between these modern man-made churches and the way of Jesus Christ. We all know Jesus was a friend of publicans and sinners, according to Matthew chapter 11. While Patriarch Kirill, who is equivalent to the Pope in Orthodoxy, is a friend to politicians and top elites. The Orthodox and Catholic churches have befriended and became the very world leaders who persecuted our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These New World Order churches are very corrupt and completely unbiblical. Both the Catholic and the Orthodox churches 
are spending millions of dollars every day to sustain the old temples and to build new ones, which look more like king's palaces. While the Pope is being pampered, hundreds of millions of kids are starving and dying of various diseases. This is not a museum, it is a treasury where the precious things meant for the Pope are kept. And most of the things here are still being used by the present Pope. These are finger rings that were used by different Popes. Then here we have the pectoral crosses, which the Pope normally wears on top. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go, and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, and follow me. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. My people have been lost sheep, their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. In all your dwelling places the cities shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols may be broken and cease, and your images may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. Now that you have seen the truth of the Catholic and the Orthodox Church, you will be able to see the worship of the Queen of Heaven has always been right in front of your face.
Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. 